Probably not in our jacket right now. Pretty warm today. Yeah, we're live. Love after seven. Today we're going to talk about the video that I put up today or tonight. It's already nine. We are going to talk about the video that I put up today, and that is on a cylinder head test that I did. Actually, I did a bunch of cylinder heads when, I, when we did this test, but I picked and chose a couple. Um, I wanted to show a comparison between like inexpensive, you know, these, these are from Speedmaster. There's lots of different varieties. Inexpensive offshore <laughs> affordable heads and then more expensive heads. And the AFR is definitely qualified for that. The AFR 265 CNC head is a not a cheap head. It's more than in looking at the price from Summit, it's more than twice the price. <laughs> so that is definitely low, low buck and mo buck. So it, they both definitely qualify for that. The and the thing is, guys use these a lot. Um, I think a lot of guys might shy away from the 265 head despite the fact that I've done lots of videos on it and shown how well it made. I mean, this thing made 600 and, uh, 610, 613 or 14 horsepower <coughs> and, and has the flow rate to support way more than that, uh, way over 650. So there's certainly enough head there. And I like the fact that it did, um, you know, as good as the, as good as the peanut port down low, you know, we could have lugged it down to 2000 and see what happens. My guess is it still would. It's a really good head and it's small enough. Although we've shown time and time again, <laughs> port volume, just even at 2000 RPM is port volume really a, a huge thing. It seems to be on the cathedral port versus rec port LS stuff, you know, much bigger valves, bigger port. They seem to not make power down low the way that the, Cathedral port stuff does, but I don't know that we would see that. I think with this AFR 265 head's pretty well set. Even though, I mean, let's face it, you probably wouldn't team a a peanut port head, a factory peanut port head, with this kind of camshaft. <laughs> this kind of camshaft was better for the you know ported aftermarket heads, and and that's where we were taking it. So it's much better choice for the airflow research and we, we ran a set of ported 049s and we ran these speedmaster heads and brodex stuff and dart and and trick flow and edelbrock and everybody so it was more set up for that but we had to have a baseline head and so you can't have the baseline head and then have a baseline different cam with the baseline head and then go oh, well we changed the camshaft and the and the cylinder head you just can't do that so one of them either either the stock head is going to get a camshaft that you know, very few people would run unless they're trying to max out, max out a, a, a peanut port head or all of the other heads are going to get a stock cam or a mild cam and not be able to show what they're doing. As it is, this cam, I mean, these heads flow, especially the Speedmaster head. It's interesting. And that's what I want to talk about tonight is the flow rates because I'm going to go to live chat um, the, the Speedmaster head actually flows more than the, than the airflow research heads. So I know pe what people are thinking, well, Richard, but what about, why doesn't it make more power? <laughs> well, because that's not the only thing. And so we're going to talk about that. What, what I want to do is I want to go over the airflow numbers. They didn't go over in the video, but we can do it here on the live feed because you know, all the live feed guys are kind of special. So you guys get to see stuff that people watch in the regular video, <laughs> the civilian videos, um, didn't get to see. But the reason that the, once you look at the, once we go over the low and mid lift stuff, you'll go, oh yeah, that's, <laughs> that makes sense. That, that why, why it would be better. Um, we have a change in chamber volume between the two, a combustion chamber volume. So obviously one of them has more, more, uh, more static compression, which is right off the bat going to be better. But let's take a look at the flow, at the flow numbers. Where are we at? Here we go. Okay. So first off, Let's take a look at the um, the peanut port head. The peanut port head didn't do too bad. It flowed 250 CFM. It was the same at 600 and 700. Um, it was 247 at 500, 233 at 400, 185 at 3, and 117 at 2, 57 and 33 down at 50 and 100. So with 250 CFM, and we made five more than 500 horsepower, we we're doing more than two horsepower per CFM. It's, it, it's certainly possible. We've done more than that. If you take a look at the Ford deal where we ran the stock head on the 392, 
if you put enough draw on the head, the fact that we're flowing it at 28 inches just means that now it's getting more than 28 inches worth of draw. So it will, it will actually flow more I mean, and it'll support that power. So we take a look at a comparison between the airflow research. So the peak flow I measured on the airflow research was 332. And that was at, um, and it flowed 331 at 600. It actually went down slightly to 316 at 700 lift, but it was nearly 300 at 400 lift. It was 298, 241 at 300 and 164 at 200. So we're, we're going to, we'll write these down. So we'll say 164, 241, 298. 332, 331, and then 317 for the AFR. And by the way, the AFR also flowed 280 on the exhaust as a peak flow. Did pretty well. Uh-oh, intake to exhaust flow relationship. We need a single pattern cam, right? <laughs> with, with dimpled rods. Okay, so um, Speedmaster head, Dr. J's. Oval port head, even the ported oval port heads flowed more than the airflow research head did. It didn't make as much power though. The Edelbrock Extreme flowed really well. So the the um, Speedmaster head was uh, 320, 311 cc intake port is what it measured out at. And it had bigger valves, 225, 188. Whereas the AFR head had a 219, 188, I believe. I'm going to go back and take a look at that. Yeah, 219, 188. So smaller intake valve. It, it obviously didn't need that to make power and to flow as well as it did. So it worked out good. So on the Speedmaster head, we've got 140, 214. 276, 314, 331, and 346. And it flowed, oh, and it flowed 284. Nice. So peak exhaust flow. So that was good. So we look at these flow numbers at 700 lift. The Speedmaster head flowed more. It flowed 346 versus 317. So what does that tell you about maybe we should have put more camshaft in this? You guys can argue about that. Even if we put more camshaft in it, we put a 700 lift camshaft in it. I, I don't think that the Speedmaster head gets to the airflow head. I don't think that would ever happen. At 600 lift, they flow the same. They both flow 331. At 500 lift, the uh, the airflow head flows 332. And the Speedmaster head flows 314. Down at uh, 276. Down at 400 lift, four, three, two, five, six, seven. So at 400 lift, the airflow research head flows 298, and the Speedmaster head flows 276. So it's 22 CFM better at 400 lift. At 300 lift, airflow has 241 versus 214. So you can see we have a big disparity. And then even at 200 lift, the airflow research flows 160 floor, 164, and the Speedmaster head flows 140. So in that range, we're talking about 20 to 25 CFM more, um, 27 CFM, I think, uh, more through the two, three, four range. Uh, and even five is, uh, what is that, 18? So all through that middle part, where it's very important to make power. <laughs> the airflow research head flows more. And Kevin, what's going on? Uh, flows more and does it with smaller valves and a smaller port and, and has a much more efficient chamber design. It has a smaller chamber design, but it's also a much more efficient chamber design. It has a lot of things going for it that, and, and we saw this on the exhaust too. The exhaust side on the airflow research head was better. So not at the peak again, like, like we saw before, but this helps explain like what's going on with this and why now it makes sense. If you take an average flow rate of these two, it, it's going to be skewed in favor, especially in the lift range where we have the camshaft, you're going to see it's way favored on, on one side. And so it's not surprising when you look at that stuff 
if you were to look at that stuff and not see the dyno results, if I were to look at that, I'd go, well, if I had to pick one of these heads to make more power, I definitely would pick the one that has better average flow. That's going to, that's going to work out better at the peak. It's only there and it's never at a peak where one of them, where one of them flows more than the other. I mean, at 331, they're both at 600 and this was a sub 600 lift cam. So it shows you the camshaft is in a range where, you know, it's going to be, it's going to benefit the most from having a lot more average power in these lower lift range, low and mid lift ranges. So that's why this thing made the power that it did with the airflow research. In fact, the airflow research head, I think was the most powerful of the heads and it did very well. It certainly, I'm sure it certainly made the most average power. I'd have to go back and look at the data just to make sure that, um, let's see, Kevin, thank you very much, Richard. Would it make sense to pair an intake that makes top end with a can that makes low end a truck Norris and an LS2 intake. An LS2 intake is not a top end intake manifold. Uh, an LS2 intake manifold is a long runner intake and it will work well with the um, truck Norris cam, but it will work just as well with a truck manifold. Uh, and, and a Trailblazer SS, which is going to be better than an LS2 intake manifold if you if you have the room to fit it in there, or the Dorman LS2 version, um, it's more expensive now, but that's the equivalent of the Trailblazer SS, and it makes it makes uh, equivalent power of the Trailblazer SS. Both of those make more power than a factory LS2 intake manifold. That that's the one that you're talking about. The the fast intake is in the range that you're talking about would is the best choice for intake manifolds. It makes the most power. It's just not cheap. It's it's very very expensive. So. We've already seen how well the these airflow research uh, 260, 265 heads did, the big block heads did, on a motor that made over 600 horsepower. But I'm still going to pose the question because I think the answer is not going to be 100%. It never is. Uh, would you run the airflow research 265 big block Chevy heads on a 600 horsepower big block Chevy build? So if you're building a motor, a big block, that you wanted to make 600 horsepower with, would that be the head that you would consider? I bet we get more nose on this one. It's too small. I need a big port. Let's see. Australia's in the house. Rex, how's your project going? <laughs> Where is everybody supposed to ask that? I do want to know. Do you prefer, per, prefer port volume like 255 over velocity? 230 cc port you you would have to see what the the hard thing about comparing port volumes and i did a port volume test the problem is that you're comparing more than port volumes generally when you're changing a head that has different port volumes it's bigger a lot of times they also team that with a, it usually it has a change in flow sometimes it has a change in valve size so it has other changes that are also going to affect the power i've never seen two sets of heads where one port is bigger than the other and everything else is the same, including the flow at all the lift ranges. I, just, I don't know how you'd achieve that. And then just see what effect the volume has, um, you know, for, oh, it's airspeed. It's all, the, all, all these things. Mike, thank you very much. Progress is going well. Good. I like to hear it. That's part that impressed me. It's not just the fact that I made more power. It made more power everywhere. Most applications that I want a big block in, I need power sub 4,000. And that's the thing. Um, if you want to see that, if we team this with a different camshaft, um, I think that this head would still do well because it has really, really good low and mid lift numbers. So if you want, if you want your power production lower than we made it on this motor, you don't need to put a 248 cam in it. Just bought a set of SE2s for 400. Nice. Richard, can you test some hand ported stock heads? Which, which hand ported stock heads? Big blocks or LSs or what? Sean, you were just watching the video and you switched over. Nice. Factory heads had bad exhaust ports. I think guys would argue on the, the, um, 
peanut port heads that they all spent that didn't take ports. Um, except for uh, uh, Vortec Pro, which I wanted to do something with him because um, he's he's done a lot of cool stuff with him. And I, I we'd like to try to do 600 with a um, with a 454 ish kind of motor. It's not the flow overall, it's through all RPMs that wins. Yeah. Why even test flow below 400 lift? Would you use a cam with less than that? But it's important. It's important for making power. It just does, does not process air at 700 lift. This one sure doesn't. It never reaches that. I wonder what David or Eric could do with the Speedmaster heads. I've seen some good ported ones. A lot of this, or some of these Speedmaster heads start out start out too big already. Um, they have the same kind of problem that like a factory LS3 head does. It's really big to begin with. It'd be better if uh, you know somebody started out with a, a smaller version of that head and then made it flow. Um, you know, basically made a small a small valve, small port version of a, of a rectangular port head. What would be the maximum CC port you would recommend for an LS1? There isn't one. I, I've run, um, we've run on an LS1, we've run all sorts of different port volumes. Um, usually we're limited by, uh, by valve size and chamber width because of the bore size. I, I wouldn't pick my head based on that. If somebody donates a pair of AFR-265 heads, I will do a comparison between them and stock 781 standard valve heads. Is a 781 a, a, a factory rec port head? If that's the case, I've already done that test. Where do you know what happens when that when, when you do that? Uh, trip flow 235 or AFR-225 for an LS Stroker 408. Or what are you doing with it? Is it just a street driver? If it's a street driver, you're not going to... Neither, I mean, both of those are going to be great. You're not going to, you're going to be happy with either one of them. If you're trying to make the most power, I, I would go through the flow curves and look at those and see, and then see what kind of camshaft you have. I don't know what intake you have. I don't know. There's a lot of other things that I would need to make that decision. Jungle, just found out about your channel. Absolutely love it. Welcome. And, and I'm glad that you came to the live feed because that's where all the magic happens. Probably trying to find the best cam for my stock 5.3, something that gives the most horsepower without losing anything. That's a that's a tough deal. The the go-to cam is going to be uh, the Truck Norris cam or the Chapacabra or any of those four cams that I just tested recently. That's a good cam that on a 5.3 you could use with a stock converter if that's what you want to do, if you've got a converter in it. And it picks up lots of power. Otherwise, you know, you can make more power than that. But when you start making more power than that, you're talking about a converter and running a lot more engine speed. And then you're, you're talking about trade-offs. Rex, uh, let's see. Let's develop variable port cylinder heads. That would be good. Power of the most rev range wins. Port size doesn't always matter. That's what I like. Yeah, I know I'm not I'm not nearly as concerned about port volume stuff as I used to because I, you know, way back when I first started testing at West Tech, people would tell me that and I didn't know. I'm like, oh yeah, you can't run that big a head or you can't run. I remember people telling me, well, well, the heads don't matter with a blower or a turbo. It doesn't matter. Camshafts don't matter. <laughs> it has to matter. <laughs> Something has to make a difference. <laughs> and, you know, through testing, I, when I first started there, from when I first started there till now, um, I made a lot of people mad because I told a lot of legends in this industry, guys who've been around a long time, have done a lot of stuff. Um, 
I corrected them on more than one occasion. And I'm like, look, I'm not, I'm not doing this because I have, you know, I'm not trying to push my way in the industry. I'm not trying to make waves, but here's the data right here. So if you can explain to me why this does this, and it's the opposite of what you're saying, how do we reconcile this? Do, if you want me to do more testing on a different application or whatever, I, I understand that as a desire. That would be okay. But I'm telling you that when we put cylinder heads on a supercharged motor or turbocharged motor, and we put cams and we make the NA power, you know, raise the NA power, I said, the boost is going to come down. The power is going to go up. And and the cam makes more power with boost and all that. Oh, no, no, that doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, it does. It actually does. Uh, didn't the 265s do better than the Speedmasters? Yeah, they make they make more power, definitely. They also cost more, though. I was impressed with the power the peanut port heads made. Yeah, they made uh, more than two horsepower per CFM, so it was pretty good. Uh, LCX, the 215s are pretty good heads. The A lot of guys will go with uh, the... Um, as cast 220, which is also a good head, all of those heads have enough to support, you know, 600 plus horsepower. Uh oh, Ricky, did um, did you see Racer? If, if the SB2 heads are dash ones, it's going to be hard to find rocker gear. Stuart, I wish you could afford to have my 439. It's kind of a unique combination. There are not many guys building them to gauge what I might be making for horsepower. Is it some kind of high winding drag race sort of motor? I got the Edelbrock E205 heads. They're more money than the Chinese heads, but cheaper than AFRs. The heads need a bit of work as the casting was messy, especially around the push rod holes. Did you port them? Can having too big of a head be an issue? Well, we talked about the, the and, and I think we would see that if we put LS3 heads on a 4.8. Um, I, I think you you would lose power down low. And the cathedral or the rectangular port heads seem to do that compared to a cathedral port head anyway when we run them like on a 6 liter or whatever. So maybe there is something to be said there. There is something to be said. Let's say that let's say that you because I've run lots of tests where we don't lose a bunch of power. Sometimes we lose some down low, and I think you would see more at part throttle where where it might be softer. Um, but let's say we even didn't see that. Let's say it was the same, but you're not taking advantage of what the head has to offer. Because somebody asked me about that. Well, how much you know? How much head do I need? I'm like, well, you know, if you take a ported LS3 head that flows, you know, 370 cfm, and you put it on a 550 horsepower motor, you're not using 200 horsepower, horsepower worth of the head. So it doesn't, you don't, you don't need that. And, and is it, is that not beneficial or is it, is it even detrimental to have that? And, you know, in my opinion, I like having uh, really good cylinder heads that way. Normally you can come down in camshaft to make given power mount. But if you're trying to get all of it, then you need lots of motor to work with heads like that that flow that much. Ever worked on a W8 small block Mopar 48 degree? Uh, I haven't done the, I've, I've only run two or three Mopar motors, even on the dyno. Rex, good. I'm glad you're in the power adders. The casting quality I've seen in some of the newer Speedmaster heads have been pretty good. Good. I know guys that take their casting and then then machine it. it is the Trailblazer SS a 102? No, it's a 92 millimeter opening. I saw a peanut port TBI 454 in the junkyard. Those are Gen 5 stuff, yeah. Would it be worth my time to hand port a set of Gen 6s? That, that's up to you. I mean, you can definitely improve the flow. Do you have enough cam to take advantage of it? 
most of the time the flow gains are at higher lift ranges. Do you have a camp shaft to take advantage of that? Are are you not making enough power now? And and you know what are, what is the what are you trying to achieve here? Getaways here. Conversation goes back, goes back to LS motors. Let's see. 781s are factory large ovals. Oh, okay, like a like an 049 kind of. Inject engines are not fussy about port volume because you do not need port velocity to signal the car boosters. You can feed the engine the fuel. That's right. It, that that might be. That's an interesting point. That would we lose? And that was my discussion, Dave, when we were talking about on port volume that we might see more of an effect at part throttle. Might be softer. How are the oval ports compared to rec ports? It would depend on exactly what head you're talking about. But this Airflow Research 265 head makes more power than a factory rec port does. In your opinion, what factory oval port heads do you think perform the best? I think the 049 is the go-to head for all these people, I guess. <laughs> Dart Buke is original LS head. Overbuilt, uh, you need a head recommendation, a cam suggestion, 460, hot rod, five speed, one ton truck, may tow a bit, and thinking speed master head with a something cam. If you're going to use that head, those heads, um, I would have them gone through. And if somebody else has something that would be similar kind of money, I, I would maybe lean more toward that. And for a camshaft, um, for a 460, something like a 230, 236 probably would be sporty enough in a five speed. Yeah, the 781s or 049s, I think, are kind of similar. The 049s that I tested, I actually had a set of those, um, way back in the day on my I had a, a Chevy Dually and um, I built a four. Built the 468 for it, and then we made that into a 489 or 496. <coughs> and we had some uh 049s on it, put bigger valves and stuff in it. I don't think we did any porting on them, but they worked well. On the two junkyard 454, I think I answered that reloading the question about the cams. I think I I, I answered that already. But in the comment section that you, because you asked that question in the comment section. What would be a recommendation of max boost on an iron block 416? With 11 to 1 compression and AFR LS3 heads. What, what block do you have that you went to, that you went that big on? And how did you get that displacement? On an iron block, you did one of two things, which I wouldn't recommend. You went to a 4065 or a 4070 bore, which I wouldn't do and wouldn't run boost on. Or you put a 4100 stroke in it, which I wouldn't do and I wouldn't run boost on. Um, <laughs> but you can. <laughs> and uh, if you are going to run boost on it, and the maximum boost you could run is going to be a function of, I don't know. I don't know how thin your walls are now. Um, if you if you did the stroke thing uh, with a stock sleeve, you're, you're probably going to have problems with it. I just don't think it's a good combination. But, but if you're worried about the compression, it's going to be a function of how much cam you have in it, what octane you're using, is it intercooled, a lot of different things. All right, I think I've decided it was either the slot mechanic, the best cam, or the truck Norris. I'm convinced to get the BTR cam now. I'm going to go order it and come back. 
Yeah, the, the best game is going to be make a little bit more power on top, uh, less power down low. I That video is up. I've compared both of those. If you want to see what both of those do, that video is up. Um, but the best cam will definitely require a converter. Have you ever heard of Skip Whiteheads? I have, but I haven't. I haven't ever run them. I think that they're probably pretty good. I think if I was picking them, I would pick them over the Speedmaster heads either in a small block or if I think they do big block ones too. Let's see. Uh, Alan, you dropped off the plate today. Cool. Let's see. Okay. Be good to have a really small can make 600 horsepower. That'd be harder to do. Um, maybe we could get that with, uh, um, you know, if we use Visard's um, 128 cam formula and put a smaller camshaft in it, maybe maybe we could get that thing to do it with something that has like 10 degrees less duration or something. You'll need 680 horsepower to run with my junkyard 454 and stock 781 heads. I think, I think a stock 781 head. What does that thing flow? Does it flow? I thought that they would have been like 300 CFM or something. Uh, what do you think about a one or two Nick Williams throttle body? I've never tried one. What's your opinion on a 2600 solid 6.2 on a truck Norris cam? You don't need it, but it will work. You don't need anywhere near that much stall speed with a 6.2. Uh, a, a, stock, a stock converter will work fine on a 6.2 of the truck Norris cam. It'll work fine all the way down to probably a 5.3. But... Um, it, it will improve things. Going by flow numbers, wouldn't be able to tell 049 and 71 parts. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought that guys were talking about them kind of being interchangeable. What is your opinion on 990 rec port heads? I think that those are the heads that I tested against the air, airflow heads in the test that I did. A little blending of the ports. 225, 188, comp, uh, 13 to 1, 688, solid cam, 60 over 427. What's the duration on the camshaft? And then what's the intake manifold? My dad acquired a Gen 5 454, made a 496 out of it, small cam, 99 454 heads. Okay, so the Gen 6 heads. What would be a good place, good starting place to build it for drag racing? What What are you, are you asking where to build it or what else to do to it? Uh, have you worked with anyone that runs in factory appearing stock tire or in competition luminaire? No, I mean, we've run some competition or the guys at West Tech have run some of those uh, style motors at West Tech, but I've never had anything to do with them. Um, I've, I've met some of the people and looked at their cars and talked to them about their stuff um, because they've come to do dyno testing, um, chassis dyno and engine dyno stuff. But n I didn't ever work on any of them. But that stuff's pretty cool. The stock appearing stuff is, is, is pretty impressive. My problem with this test is the pro comp heads were out of the box and the AFRs were CNC'd. Your problem with this test, sh it should read, um, I don't have a problem with this test because both of these heads were out of the box the way that they came from the manufacturer. That's the way that they're supplied. You're welcome. 
<laughs> we I tested the heads the way that they came. I tested the heads the way that they were supplied by all of the manufacturers from Dart, from Brodex, from everybody. So <laughs> it makes sense to test a, at least one that has a CNC uh, chamber. Uh, 4065 bore. Yeah, I, I would. Did you sonic check that thing to make sure what the what the cylinder wall was? The thing is, Nate, you don't need that displacement to make power with a turbo. You 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 would rather have wall thickness and and block integrity. And making the power is easy with a turbo. You don't need to make the NA power. I mean, it's fun driving around with an NA motor like that. And if I was doing an NA motor. I might try that. I don't think I'd go to a 4065 bore on a on a iron block. I would go to a 4030, but um, you don't need that with a turbo. The turbo will do that with a 48. It'll do it with a 53. It'll do it with a 60. It will do it with, do it with all those. Let's see. Uh, reloading. Well, those two things were tested on two different motors that started out <coughs> with different power levels because they're two different junkyard motors. And all I can go by is what they did. I don't, you know, we tried one cam in one and one cam in the other, and I can just report the changes. One of them started lower and I need to go back and look and see if that, my guess is that's probably the bigger cam one. Do you think that the BB2 X365 is too much for a 496 with an F2 Pro Charger? Given I don't care much about losing power at the bottom end, the head will work. I don't. I don't know that you're using all of that head on a 496. I would doubt that you are, unless you're, unless you've got a lot of camshaft and stuff in it. Uh, is it likely that an LQ4 with 862 heads would produce similar power numbers as your test of the LY6 with 706 heads? Yeah, the piston's a little different between those two, but it, they, they should be similar. I, I don't know if it, it would have, I don't know if it will make 500. We were talking about that the other night. I, I think it will. I think it will on the, it won't make 500 with 706 heads, not, not by, not even close. My point was that it would make 500 with the rec port heads. 706 heads are going to be way down compa compared to a rec port head. Richard, I'm putting a 49 in my dually. I didn't know you did that. Yeah, I did it. Um, it was a whole thing that I did. We <laughs> had a tired 454 in our 77 dually with also a tired 400 turbo, turbo 400 trans. And we used it to tow our race trailer when we were World Challenge racing across the United States. And it was only running really good on about four or five of the eight cylinders. It's not very good. And so I built up a motor. Um, and I made mistakes that everybody else makes. This is way back. But I made the mistake of choosing a terrible intake manifold, which was a, a Edelbrock Performer 2.0 or something. It was I thought, well, I got to get a small manifold to make lots of torque. And then I picked like a 203 um, I think it was a crane emissions legal cam or something. It's like a 203, you know, an RV cam, 203, 210 or 212 or something like that. And we picked um, small tri-y headers for it. I think that they were inch and three quarters or something. I picked everything that was just terrible for this thing. And I, and I had those 049 heads, which those were good. Um, and then we ran the motor. And I think that that motor made 440 horsepower or something. 450 horsepower. It was, it was, it was right near, it might've been 460. It might've been just over one horsepower per cubic inch, which was awful considering all the stuff that was put on there. And then what I did after we had done that, I took that motor back out. But before we made it into a 489, we had, we, uh, we had also run that motor with a small 174 supercharger. That's how we, that's what we used to tow with all the way across the United States and back so that we had enough power to get over hills because it added another hundred horsepower or something or, and at least a hundred foot pounds of torque. 
And so I did a big series on the buildup of what I should have done with this thing. It was called the hunt for grunt. And I did, um, we finally put a camshaft in it, like a two thirty camshaft in it. We put, uh, bigger headers on it. The dyno headers or two inch headers or whatever. Um, we put an RPM air gap on it. And the thing then made the, I remember because when we did the NA upgrades to it, it made as much power as the other motor did with the blower. <laughs> Cause we ran the 400 and something horsepower motor with a blower and it made 500 and something horsepower. And then when we put the modifications on it. Then now the 454 made 500 and something. I'm like, and I didn't lose, like I didn't lose a bunch of low speed power. So it was a good, it was a good combination. And then we put the blower on that. And we, then we were kind of maxing out that little blower. And then we put one of the um, like 250 or 420 mega blowers. We tried a 250 blower and then a 671, all kinds of stuff. And so it was a, and then we made it into a 489 and I did all that again. It was a lot of stuff, but it was, um, that was a good series. I like that. Uh, TSP Chopper Copper says L6 beehives. Yeah, they're 550 springs. They'll work. But your your dual springs will work fine too. You don't need 660 lift springs with that camshaft. Um, the closer that you are to coil bind, the better off you would be. But you're not going to be revving that motor, and the 660 lift spring will work. It's just a lot of lift, and it's and it's more load on the lifter and the camshaft and the um, rocker arms. Uh, Rex, it's not just the cam on David's motor. Yeah, I'm not. We, I wasn't talking about having David build a motor. I was saying that that this motor could make more power if it had a different camshaft in it. Uh, big house. Do you watch the temperature one? Richard, if you're going to go for a max effort 389 bore LS, what heads would you use? I don't know. It's been a while since I looked at whatever the best heads out there would be. I don't know what that is anymore. I don't know if there are, are you talking about like a, when you say max effort, <laughs> uh, Matt made a post on this the other day. That was kind of funny. Um, when you say max effort, are you talking about a 10,000 or 11,000 RPM, like solid roller, you know, everything dry sumped, all of that stuff. Is that what you're talking about? Or are you just talking about trying to make 500 horsepower with it or 600 horsepower or something like that? So I don't know which one of those it is because you're going to, you know, the head that you'd be looking at probably would be different for those. If you're looking just for the regular bolt on head, there's lots of good choices that could make the power probably that you want. If you're looking for something that's sub 600 horsepower. Uh, Jason, thank you very much. What's your take on 291 rec port heads on a 454? Is a is a 291? That's an old school. That's like the heads that I have on the the um, L78. The, those are valuable heads. <laughs> you should you, you should probably hold on to those. Those are desirable. uh duration is 308 at 50 312 yeah that's so you're you're definitely spinning that thing a lot of rpm how would a rec port air gap work with the 265s we've run stuff like that before and it would work fine i don't know in the direct comparison between an oval port we think that the oval port air gap is different than the rec port one is irrespective of the port uh, dimension and shape change. We think that it's also a different kind of intake manifold. We think that maybe the ports are bigger all the way through or, you know, a different, different layout or different dimension or different length. Um, we think that the rec port one makes more power. Um, because they, the West tech, Steve and Freiberger did a test on that where they poured it out one of the oval ones and they could get it to match the rec port one and they interchanged them between motors and um, it works. You can, you can do it. I just don't know if you would see anything, any, any gain from that or, or, or much of a loss. Uh, 
Uh, Austin, a 496 should help <laughs> should help knock two seconds off pretty easily. Um, did you give me a, send me an email if you want me to suggest um, or I, I mean you can take a look at the videos. I have lots of stuff for 496s that have made from 600 to near 700 horsepower. Westec has one I think that's probably near 800, but it's you know it's pretty spicy. I didn't buy the Cleveland in the wrecking yard. My original 489 had peanut ports on a 212 cam and rock 2.0. Yeah, this is not. Um, Brulee and Freiburger, they're doing engine masters and they just did a test on those um, dual plane intake manifolds. He said, man, that one's terrible. I said, I know, that's the one I do remember I had. Uh, and I don't, I don't even know if Brulee was there at that time. This was way back. Um, this might've been before Steve was there, but the, I said, those, that's the intake manifold that I had in my block. I said, I, I kind of think that that's the SP2P of the big block era. <coughs> uh, Angel, have you ever used David's formula? I have not. I've, I've never tried to select a camshaft for some sort of like maximum effort thing other than when I was doing engine masters and I didn't, and I didn't do it for that. Are there any advantages other than relocating the oil filter to an external wet sump system? Are you talking about just a remote filter or actually having an external uh, wet sump pump? How can I prime the oil on my 98 Ford? It's been sitting for 11 years. I don't want to wipe out the bearings. Um, I haven't seen it done on a mod motor, but I would think that you could. The way that they do it on LSs, because it has that kind of gyrotor rotor pump on it, is uh, a pressurized canister with oil in it. And then you open the valve on the pressurized canister to feed oil into a, an oil galley. And then it fills the fills it up. And then also what we do is before we start one of those motors on the engine dyno, we use pressurized air. We seal everything off on the motor, use pressurized air, like going into the dipstick or, or anywhere to get pressurized air into the pan. And what we're doing is pushing oil up into the pump and into the whole motor actually. And we can see that on our, on our oil pressure gauge. Um, and then we pressurize that and without the spark plugs on, we spin the motor over with the starter and that way it grabs the oil immediately. And everything is already pre-lubed and stuff um, because we do that with assembly lube or oil when we're, when we're first assembling the motor. But we do that when we first start up and that way it, um, it spins over a little faster without the plugs in and is more likely to grab the oil. And then when we have pressure, we've pressurized the oil and the oil goes up into the pump and actually start, we'll start going into the motor if we let it sit there long enough at two or three PSI. Do LS cans require a break? And no, we don't ever, we just put them in and run them. Uh, I don't want to miss out on boost. David said that he loves you. Uh, Dave Vizard is a good, is good people. Oh, an external pump. I, I don't know what the benefit of, of this. The thing that scares me about external pumps is the, um, is the belt. I'm worried about something hitting the belt and knocking it off. That, that obviously doesn't happen. Although other things happen, you spin drive pump drive shafts and you know, you can, you can damage that. The gyro pumps are pretty, you know, they're kind of bulletproof. Uh, Freya, so you're using, it has to be a stock bottom end. So are you limited in camshaft then? It, it is hot up here. It was 90 today, I think. Do you think it would make much of a difference using the 2.0 versus an air gap on a stock Gen 5? I don't know. I kind of would like to do 
some testing on one of these junkyard motors, probably not a Gen 5, but like a Gen 6. I'd like to do a test on some of these dual planes that I've run that we have for big blocks, particularly oval port stuff. I'd like to see what happens if we, I don't, I don't even know if we have one of those uh, Performer 2.0s, if they, if they have it at West Tech. Um, maybe they have the one from Engine Masters. I'd like to try some of those because I want to see on some of them, I think they have a full divider. Some of them have a cut divider. I kind of want to see actually what's going on down there, you know, down at 2000 RPM on some of these stock ones and see if those are, which one of those has a benefit. Typically when I run a divider all the way up, the signal's better to the carburetor down low. It's, you know, it's happier. Richard, have you played with a flamethrower kit? I have not. The ones that go out the exhaust, I, <laughs> like on Grease, <laughs> I do like those though. Should try a Big Bang on a, is that a turbo diesel or something? Uh, we're not going to run diesels on it. 31 degrees here. Yeah, it was beautiful here today. Richard, do you think uh, rectangular port heads with 315 runners and a cam with 250 degrees duration at 50 on an L78? So on a 390, is it still a 396? And what what heads are those? Are those stock um, like iron rec port heads or a, a 315 or a 305 or a 315 uh, AFR rec port head would work really well on their megawatts power? No, just stock rods. Stock rods, pistons, block can run upgrade hardware though. It's a budget heads up class. Okay. So if you do, you, you can have a piston that has a valve relief in it, so you could run lots of camshaft in it. Do you ever pe do people ever weld the floor of the intake port to have a raised port? Then you'd have to do some some stuff to the top of the port too, though. Uh, Pac-12 18s. I don't know what a Pac-12 18 is because I I don't think I've ever used that spring. I know that it's a common one out there, and I probably should know more, but I I haven't. Um. Can, can you do st stuff to a stock head? I mean, there's lots of tricks that you would do to a, in, in a stock class, depending on how strict they are with stuff. Four you know, peanut ports and a 212 cam is getting some AFR 265s. That's a, that'll make a big difference. <laughs> Southern California Torrance. It was only 67 today down there. Uh, World Products. Merlin 315s. I don't know if I've ever run those. I'd I, I would kind of want to look at the flow. I mean, they'll work, obviously. And they and they sh and I would think that those would be better than a um than a factory rec port. But I'd I'd really like to see the um the flow through the lift range. ditch in the 2.0 I, I think that's probably a good idea i i was thinking that the 2.0 was going to be you know have all the torque because that's what we we're looking at i gotta make torque i gotta have the small cam i gotta have the small headers gotta have the small intake i think we man i need to go back and look and see i we we may have had a we may have had a quadra chip on it and i also had a, a timing retard on it so that when we were going up hills with the blower we had <laughs> so we take timing out of it <clears throat> yeah, the port modifications guys are talking about, that's pretty common on Cleveland stuff, port stuffers and heck on the exhaust side, they cut the whole back side of it off. I selected yes on your question, but only if it was using them on a 454 or bigger. That's too much head for a 396. Uh, an Airflow Research 265 head is not too big for a 396 or a 427. 
In fact, it probably would be better on those. Uh, hey, make smog legal power on a two valve. I don't know. You have to look for smog legal performance mods for that. Have you made a video like temperature video, but only pull timing to see how much horsepower changes? Yeah, if you take a look, I have lots of tune videos where we've run the motor at from, you know, usually the variation is 10 or 15 degrees or something. So you can see what effect power has, or what effect timing has on power. Does low lift flow numbers affect engine horsepower, even if both sets of heads flow the same at 600? Did, were you here earlier when we were talking about the flow lift ranges of the AFR heads and the Speedmaster heads? Because that's exactly what happened. They both flowed the same at 600 lift but the AFR head flowed 20 to 25 CFM more through all the lower lift ranges and made a lot more power. Did I think the overflow cap was incorrect? That's not good. <clears throat> what heads would you think on a small block Ford, you know, a street car, five speed, RPM two, uh, I would pick 185s. What's the maximum difference between spring lift and cam lift that you'd run? It's 108. So if the spring, if like like a 660 lift spring and a 550 lift cam, we've done that before only because we were going to put another camshaft in it and it worked fine on the dyno. If I was setting a car up to drive around a lot, I wouldn't do that. Like I said, it's 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 bad for um, spring control, and it's also you're running way more um, spring rate than you need probably for the camshaft that you have, and that makes it harder on all of the parts. Merlin no 43 rec parts work great right on my old 468. Yeah, grease lighting flames. I've never done those. <clears throat> uh, dirt, you're going to be looking at a, oh, it's an inline Windsor head. Hmm. I think guys have used the high port head. I don't know if the high port head didn't do as well as the airflow research head did. So you can't use a Yates style head. Do you have any dual quad tuning videos? Actually I do. I, well, I don't have a dual quad tuning video. I was there while West Tech was running a dual quad 283 from a 61 Corvette. And they had to finagle with the carburetor, carburetors a lot to get it to work. And they did. And it's really cool because it's, it's going in a 61 Corvette that the guy's going to drive around. And it's a stroker 283, <laughs> which means it's a 350. And it's a weird combination because it's got a really, it's got a roller cam in it that I think is way too big. And yet it did, it did seem to work just fine. So the guy that put it together told me what the specs are. I said, that's how much duration it has at 50? I said, that's not an advertised number? He said, no. I said, this is a 6,000 RPM motor. I know, works good. I go, okay. <laughs> Uh, dirt late model and requirements are inline only. Yeah. Stuart, I have to apologize for what might seem like random comments. No, that's the thing about the live feed is uh, I may have a the topic of discussion, but 
we're not limited in our discussion. You'll see if you come here fairly often that it will degenerate into, <laughs> into golf ball dimples and rod ratio and Bigfoot and UFOs and all sorts of weird stuff sometimes. <laughs> Bob, the doctor told you to lose 40 pounds. You only have 65 to go. Nice. How's our poll doing? 78% would, would be yes. That's actually a higher number than I thought it was going to be. I thought people would still not want to run over ports. Yeah, the cannon valve stuff certainly can make a lot of power. Oh, that's right. I forgot the snakes and dogs, puppies and tigers and lions. Oh, my. Lions and tigers and bears. Uh, how would you go about measuring piston dome? I don't normally. Normally, I just go by what the manufacturer says. But I suppose if you could seal off the top and pour water in it and measure it, because as long as you have it, you have it in a fixed position down in the bore, you could get close. And just do a displacement thing. What happened with the Ford Bearer motors? They're just sitting. I don't. I don't think that the N three fifty one head is going to be a good choice, though. Somebody Austin mentioned that, but I don't. I don't think that that's going to be. I don't think that's in the same league with a airflow head. Uh, Vincent, the, on, on a brake in oil, it's not as critical on a, on a LS motor. It has a roller cam in it. It doesn't have a flat tap cam. So you don't, we don't normally use high zinc stuff in a, in an LS. We just put, sometimes we'll run brake in oil. Usually it's just a 530. Um, Cody, the, Running nitrous is just going to add to the power that you have. And a 205 head on a 306 in a mild combination like you're talking about, I don't think it's going to gain you anything. I think you're going to make the power that you're going to make with the 185 head. In fact, that combination isn't anywhere near what a either a 165 probably or a 185 head will support. So you're just going to be making that power based on that camshaft and that displacement, that intake manifold. The head's along for the ride because it can support a lot more. And then when you add nitrous to it, you're just going to take a 400 horsepower motor and add a hundred shot to it. That's what you use on the 363. What the, the N head? Uh, Ricky, you, you might be able to do that. You could clay it and make a mold. I haven't given my Mustang any love lately. I haven't seen my Mustang in, in a decade. After seeing all your tests with AMR 265, it seems like it's about the best here. Uh, it, it would be you'd be hard pressed, I think, to find a better kind of streetish mo street head for that than that. I think. Uh, Stuart. Okay. I just meant I started off asking your opinion on 990 heads on my 439 and didn't supply enough information on the cam other than the lift. I sent the direction numbers. Was, was that the, um, Stuart, was that the 300 lift cam or the 300 duration cam? I'm scrolling back now. Naturally, now I can't see it. Uh, what does that mean? You haven't seen it for so long. It's not even in the same, I'm not even in the same state as my Mustang. 
so Stuart. Oh, the the 990 heads. I don't know if I don't remember now if they were ported, but I think a stock 990 head is probably like a. Maybe I have that those flow numbers. I'm thinking that a 990 head flows low 300s or something, low to mid 300s, 330 or something like that. So it could support 650 horsepower or more if everything else is right. That's a big cam, so you're going to be running lots of engine speed. Three hundred eight, three twelve. So you're you're going to be spinning the heck out of that thing. Don't have any experience with them, but based on the numbers. Yeah, the, the airflow research head flows, those heads will flow over 300 by, by a pretty good bit. So 7,500 RPM is as high as you're going with that? I would have thought it would have been more with that. Is that a, um, is that a flat tappet cam or is it a roller cam? The, then the 990 heads will work. They're not. They're they're not going to work as well as an aftermarket head would, obviously. So it's a solid flat tappet. That's that's a lot of flat. I, I don't know if I've ever seen a flat tappet that has that much duration at 50. That's a ton. Two more minutes. Caleb, you sold your 66 fastback? Fast back? I told you I'd give you 1500 for it. Not cash and not all at once, but, <laughs> you know, eventually. Uh, seven eleven years will be the last question. Um, what is the cheapest, um, the cheapest power adder? It would have to be a turbo because it's a, all the stuff that you could do yourself. The turbo itself, it could be a couple hundred dollars. Then you have to do lots of stuff. So if you're a talented guy, you can do that. If you have to buy a whole kit, then you're looking at other stuff. The, the LSA blower is no, not, no longer an affordable thing. Um, you're talking about stuff that's multiple thousands of dollars to, to make work. You should be able to put together, most guys can put together a turbo kit for a lot less than that. And on that note, it's time to go. Uh, if I haven't answered your question, please come back tomorrow <laughs> or, or ask me in my email or in comments or whatever you need. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm just trying to read some more comments. There's always like more stuff to talk about. <laughs>